words of an idea, and I, I feel like we'll all end up chatting a bit more about it. Yeah, I'm surprised that you wanted to use a porn site like Pornhub as your pick, but that's fine. I'm, uh, okay I'm not familiar that. with that site, but... Oh, wow, I didn't know Andrew was on. Yeah, uh, he's uh, he's on Skype. Let me add you to the call here. He's high. Ibuprofen high. I, I be... I be profen high too. I be profen high. Fry. I Dude, be profen. All right, see you soon. Uh, dude, I know, I know our schedules are all really tight, trying to make the most of our shooting times. But uh, mm -hmm. I was really pleased with yesterday. I was really proud of all of us. I, I, I think that that was that was a fine, fine. Yeah. Fine bit of work that we got done. Yeah. Uh. Oh, someone's saying there's an echo? 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 Testing? I don't, I don't know. Echo? Let me mute myself. Echo? Echo? Oh, wait, uh, maybe mine. Uh, okay, well. Oh, no, sorry. Okay, we're good. She's a uh, misunderstanding. Hello, everybody. Hello. Happy Monday is June 8th. Uh, man, here's how you know you're doing real work mm -hmm. is when you realize that Monday is your day off. You know, the day that you do weird things after things, uh, 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 happy hour, cord killer, spoiler in time, and after talk. <laughs> That's the easy one. Uh, not tomorrow? Uh, not Tuesday? Tomorrow we only have... Wait, do we have even more tomorrow? No, I'm saying because you... Okay. Uh, my, my joke is that yeah. we're all working very hard, mm -hmm. and I woke up this morning realizing I only had five or six podcasts to do, <laughs> and... <laughs> somehow that felt like oh good today's a neat, today's a leg day <laughs> you know like like okay cool <laughs> uh that was one of the things um i don't think i'm talking out of school but it's like as we sketched out this two or three weeks uh we're we're trying to maximize and do basically the way television would do, you know, shoot a full season of, of modern rogue stuff. Uh, and when you do the math, you're like, uh, okay, so that gives everybody two days off. Uh, this is something that, that uh, Corey said. And I was like, everybody, huh? And then there was this moment where Corey <laughs> was doing the math and it's like, well, yeah, Bryce gets two days off these two days. Nope. Uh, uh, Brank, oh, well, like, <laughs> it's not, not even me. All right. But everyone, <laughs> also, I mean, in, I'm, I'm in saying theory. you're not alone on this boat here. So just, <laughs> yeah. the, you're, the, you are preaching to the wrong crowd. Well, okay. you right, right, right. you're, you're on the same team as me. Uh, the point is, people whose jobs it was to think about whether or not anybody got time off looked at the schedule and said yep everybody gets a couple of days off and then uh and then there's that moment of like do they and and you're right uh, uh, uh both bryce and i are in the weird <laughs> boat where quite literally for three weeks straight none of us will be having any days off yeah well hey justin there he is yeah well, my... what's up andrew must be nice to have jobs guys <laughs> I'm an out of work writer. Out of work writer here, okay. <laughs> oh, I'm jealous because I just realized like my my Fletch curly cues will never catch up to yours. Like like uh, no matter how much Dude. I I flip them up, you're, you you started that game ahead of me. That is the one thing I have I have unruly hair that just that I have like my head is full of calyx. But the curly cues, the thing I got. There's photos of me as a little kid. And you just see me with like just this, you know, Agnes uh, Simpson hair. It just was mm. unmistakable. I did realize that uh, because of COVID, I could do a very good impression of what I would look like wearing a wig. Uh, oh, dude, Elton John. I just watched Rocket Man. Hello, it's me, normal middle-aged Brian Brushwood. Certainly not older no. Brian Brushwood 
playing a younger version of myself with an no, obvious Elton wig John. on. It's Elton John. Yes. That's it. Reginald. Reginald Dwight. 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 <laughs> the echo's coming from Justin. You're you're hearing Sorry an echo. Sorry for on you, buddy. First of all, you're hearing Justin. an echo. No, no, no. It is. It was. It was. I forgot to remute oh, the thing. Okay. Uh, gotcha. Echo is the device. If you want to activate it, what you say is, Alexa, play Baby Shark. Mm. I'm thinking of getting one of those Siri balls. Wait, does Siri have balls now? The uh, the home home pod, whatever it is. Oh, they're bad. Could, could we just call them Siri balls? Fr friend of mine. Friend of mine has one. Yeah. It's, uh, the sound's good off it, but uh, boy, is it the finickiest. Like, I would say that the Google devices and the Amazon devices are pretty like six of one, half dozen of the other. Mm -hmm. The Siri one is behind the behind the curve in terms of you being able to like have it recognize what you wanted to recognize. Some, sure. Someone I... just said, what's up, old Jimmy Neutron? And for a second, I thought he meant good old, mm -hmm. like like good old classic long time ago, Jimmy Neutron. No, but he, no, he just old. needs to no, know me. I'm physically old. Yeah. I think that's what he was getting at. Yeah. Well, my thinking on so. getting the Siri ball is uh, you can hook it up to your Apple TV and it can act like a speaker because my TV has bad speakers. And yeah. the rumor is that they're going to update the Apple TV so that you can permanently tell because right now I think you have to treat it like a Bluetooth device and hook it up every time you turn it on. Uh, but, oh. but I think they're working on a way to uh, kind of like with the Roku's, they've got Roku's built in some of these sound bars. Uh, you could use a HomePod uh, as a speaker. So I, 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 I would because I, I don't need the personal. It. I don't need the assistant very much. You know. Yeah, I would. There's a lot of really, really good sound bars sure. that are cheaper than a HomePod that you could just hook up to your TV. I yeah, but then I'd have a HomePod. <laughs> <laughs> have, I'm, I'm telling you, that's the ball. disappointing part. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm, like, there uh, have been right enough times. The... I, like, I like the Hey S name thing enough, but my phone is upside down and it won't do the Hey S thing if your phone is, uh, if the screen of your phone is against a surface. And I have that happen just enough where, uh, where it would it would solve a problem maybe. I'm like the hugest Apple fanboy in the world. Like mm -hmm. I buy everything. I buy Apple watches and I don't wear them. Okay. Um, the home pod was such a profound disappointment, mm -hmm. particularly when they realized that it was, it wasn't even created by the Siri team or that part of the team. It was literally created by like some people who were like in the, you know, like we just wanted to build a, a speaker, a better speaker. Oh, uh, maybe you should add a digital assistant. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Do you think people are going to want those? <laughs> You know, everything was such an afterthought about that. And that's why they came up with, you know, the most expensive digital assistant that does the least and has the least amount of integration to everything else. Like, you literally have to run it through your phone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I've got one of the, uh, an, an Echo Dot, and I I never got any, I, I, I had a bad experience with that. Mm. So See, I have that. I have, like, most, all the different ones. Like, we've got the... The, the newer ones, the dot we put in the bathroom. I know, but. The, uh, the Echo is a weird one because um, I, I'd be so curious where, I, I know it's a wild privacy invasion, but mm -hmm. um, like I can ask for songs by the wrong names and it figures it out and we're like, you mean this, a totally different name than the thing you said. I got it for you. And I'm playing it from a service that is outside of me. It's like a, a like uh, I don't know. I'm I'm pretty impressed with the Echo. Nice. Yeah, the audio book with the integration to Audible alone is my favorite thing of all. Yeah. <clears throat> um. Alrighty. Um. How's everybody doing? You guys want to start a show? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um. Oh, and and Justin, we were saying this right before you hopped on on the line because Andrew's got. Still got some pains. I uh, might be running the show. Yeah. Uh, also stated another way, equally accurately, that Matt, that Andrew, he's got some kind of mouth on him. <laughs> I don't think we'll let yes. him run the show today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, then uh, here we go. In three, two.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Bryce Castillo, joined, as always, with Andrew Maine. Hello, folks. Brian Brushwood. See? You did good. That was good, Andrew. You said the words. You showed up. And Justin Robert Young. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were talking just before we went live about the fact that uh, 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 Andrew is recovering from surgery, so Bryce will be taking point on this episode. That's right. Yeah. Uh, oral uh, yeah, surgery, Andrew, guys. Andrew's nothing weird. Hurt. Nothing weird. <laughs> yeah, nothing yeah. weird. No, I'm, just, just I'm, awesome. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited you're here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, and I'm glad that you're here too. We need some aquatic experts for our first story here. Uh, Man, if only one of us had a prime time special about you know doing underwater stuff on a major cable network. Yeah. In fact, we'll we'll let him guess last because he's most likely to get this. Gentlemen, I'm going to show you. This is a photo of a white tip shark off of the coast of Kona, Hawaii. Man, I was hoping the question would be. What is this creature? Oh, I'm already, sorry. First off, shark. I can tell it's a, yeah. it's a shark. How are you, Fred? <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you, what is, there's a story. There is a story hidden in this photo. Uh, Brian, can you, uh, uh, can you describe the image for me and see if you can yeah. figure out the story here? Uh, well, uh, there seems to be three things worth noticing. You have, you have, you have a shark and you, it's near, not a, cla- uh, what, a zebra fish, I think. I um, like it. Uh, there's a couple of creatures attached to the side, but they're too small to be mer- remora. Remora are those those kind of bigger fish that just sort of ride along. They they, they almost look like snails. Uh, wait a minute. Nope. I also see weird circles. <gasps> Did this shark fight an octopus? Are those octopus six rings on it? Wrong, wrong cephalopod. Wrong cephalopod. There was a real life shark versus squid attack. Is that is that what happened? This believes to be the first <gasps> recorded evidence of a shark and squid <laughs> fighting. Uh, Yanis Papas. Oh man, I should have I should have practiced this word. Papas de Mat. Ciao. And, and sorry about that. Oh Janice. my God. Okay. Okay. Uh, for, Describe uh, for, the for, apparent yeah, for, interaction. For the home people, um, I mean, it, it, uh, it's. Can I, okay. but, yeah, I want to interrupt here. Go for it. I'd heard, I'd read the headline for this. I never saw the photo. When he put this photo up, I'm looking at this thing closely. Like, is this a fake shark? Cause there are those weird markings. And then like you, Brian, I had that. Oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it, uh, 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 uh I mean, we're accustomed to seeing sh- sharks with all kinds of scars. Uh, sadly, oftentimes, you know, they're they're scars from motorboats or what have you. So as a result, when I saw those those loops, the first thing I thought of is how they resembled like a uh, six pack uh, plastic rings, and I was afraid oh, this yeah. is going to be some other, you know, b- uh, boohoo for plastics story. But but that's a dope story, man. That is definitely so- a tentacle that wrapped around and squeezed. Yeah, so for that, it's, you see rows of suction marks, you see the faint outline of where the, the lash part of the tentacle, and then a couple puncture points, which would be from the center of the tentacle. Like, it's, as fingerprints go, yeah. it's a GD squid. <laughs> uh, and and yeah. these are squids that we still, I mean, obviously have not gotten full, like, photographic evidence of, and all we really know of its existence are when they're, tentacles wash up onto the shore right is that is that yeah correct? we've seen like yeah. uh corpses yeah. show up like like we know that 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 true deep sea squids exist uh we found uh, uh pieces or i thought I, I thought one or two has washed up uh and i want to say that a year or two ago some japanese scientists got you know that uh, basically sasquatch looking footage of 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 what you know of a real one mm-hmm. but uh but dude to see the straight up slap marks across the face of a shark <laughs> well and that's the thing is that it's it's not necessarily even the issue that they fought it's that the shark is alive right because <laughs> yeah. i'm sure that there's been many of squids that have fought sharks that for which the sharks don't live to tell the tale mm-hmm mm-hmm uh, so right now they cannot conclude exactly what species of squid fought the shark, but they do believe it to be a giant squid. Quote, it had to be something pretty big. Uh, I'm reading from the science uh, report. It says uh, that squid was pretty dope. What a badass <laughs> to take on a shark like that. Whoa, bro. Wow. I'm going to do a bong hit. It's me, a scientist. 
<laughs> Official statement. All right. My audio dropped out. I want to show you a photo. This to show you how badass sharks are at handling pain. My first first dive, very first dive into shark infested waters. The first thing I saw. This is no lie. This is no. You know. This is no documentary. Let me just jump to the chase. The first thing once we hit the bottom of the ocean, I look out there and I see these two great whites. And you Those notice are the one in front. Oh yeah, there's a huge scar on the left side of the. That the larger Jesus. shark there, it just looks like which loose skin. Oh my goodness! Yeah, it looked like a zombie shark, right? It looked like another, and presumably it was another shark had bit him. And they're like, "We've never seen this." And this is shark. This is if you watch Discovery Channel, these are the two brothers because they're seen around all the time. You know, they hang out with each other, which sharks constantly do, looking for like, Heisenberg. Yeah, exactly. But that's like, it's like sharks. Don't do that. But they did that. And then when I went down there, Andy Casagrande was, was all excited. He's like, oh, my God, because we just she's like, we just shot them a few days ago. That guy didn't have that scar. I'm like. Oh, so something welcome? something went down in the intervening moments. And that is a fresh scar. And that is not something. Uh, that, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. I, I guess I, I hadn't even thought of like you don't normally see big flapping skin off off a shark like that. Right. Like that's this is nope. its own. Oh. That's terrifying. Mm -hmm. It's a new reality yep. show. S shark snitches. Uh, Captain Kipper in the chat uh, sent along this video of a giant squid uh, being captured. Uh, no, that's on a imagery. lady. She's talking mm -hmm. about some marine yeah, stuff. Very, mm -hmm. oh, you could... Uh, there we go. So, uh, uh, shark, you know, this, uh, it, in terms of, because I mean, this doesn't, we don't know what type of squid. We don't exactly know for sure who uh, was the aggressor here. Who started it. Who started it. Yeah. Uh, where, about somebody's girlfriend or like, you know, whether or not there's a problematic thing there. Like, I mean, here's just... what we now know that both sharks and squids can snap. As they get ready, yeah. To <laughs> That's why the real are, are scientific. There any gangs? <laughs> why wasn't? Why weren't they the squids? <laughs> like the sharks and the squids. I feel da -da -da -da. like would have been. Da -da 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 -da. Well, maybe there are. Squid, maybe you're a squid till the end. Maybe that. Maybe the squid gang just hangs out like they very rarely seen. You know, you only like if you cross a squid like. You have the scars for life. Like, Tentacles they're flailing life. with suction cups bend. Da -da 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 so, uh, and so while we don't get a lot of direct evidence here, this also helps in terms of con uh, conservation efforts. Ocean white tips uh, are uh, uh, a, uh, uh, I, I don't know if it's exactly an endangered species, but. Uh, Probably threatened, yeah. Yeah, threat. that's right, threatened. Critically endangered. I'll tell you, uh, I'll tell you who is threatened. Is anyone who wanted to step between those two? When you're a shark, you got rows full of teeth. <laughs> uh, and so, knowing that uh, they may hunt in certain waters, and uh, that they might get into tussles with uh, with giant squids, help uh, set policy on what parts of the ocean to protect. So. <laughs> It's a little bit of a shark update. We got people in the chat who are like picking sides. Sharks more yeah. like farts. Am I right? Boo! <laughs> squid gang. Squid gang. Hashtag squid gang. <laughs> Tentacles up. All right. I got a question here for the panel. We'll go in order here. What do you think the first animals on Earth were? Animals? Full stop? The first... Yes. So, so including like dinosaurs, right? First ever land animal. I mean, look. Oh. The answer is always a crocodile. They're immortal. They're forever. They're the best. It's mm. always a crocodile. Always a crocodile, says Brian. Maybe it's a tiny crocodile. Mm. Maybe it's a regular crocodile. Maybe it's crocodile Dundee. It's always a crocodile. All right, Justin. I'm gonna say it's something platypus adjacent. <laughs> something oh. some weird some weird like marshland creature okay um, very progressive yeah all right uh andrew andrew andrew's racking his brain thinking about the correct answer here well because I, I think that like when you try to define land animal it gets sort of weird my guess if you were to ask me like what would be the first animal i think that probably went towards the land and maybe stayed there for periods of time and maybe even developed sort of the organs like the organelles 
for air, maybe like a crab, some sort of crab. Wait, uh, uh, okay, crab do, is a good do guess. You think crab over lungfish. I mean, if we're playing for reals. Uh... Well, I mean, a, a lungfish. That it's just, long, long enough to get you, out of water, lay its eggs in the safety, knowing that there's no predators up there on them crazy washing yeah, but you shores. Get, you, but, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Like again, that's where it gets hairy. Are we talk about something that just goes and puts its eggs on land, or like because you have crabs that kind of like it will live in moist environments and like Ooh, stay outside question. of the water, do, like uh, in Florida. Yeah, do, gotcha. Does an amphibian count as an animal? We are looking for uh, the first species that has left the primordial soup. Uh, oh, and to and to live that, that, on that, land that is born on land, lives on land, dies on this land. Permanent home. That's the way we're looking for a permanent home. Yes, on land. Uh, I know this. Okay. The Montanan. The because <laughs> that's his land. That was his daddy's land. <laughs> that was his daddy's daddy's land. And mm. you're gonna get off that land, or we're gonna have a problem. <laughs> Click clack. Oh, I I know, what? Adam. Uh, Adam. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> baby. I don't see why we made it so complicated. Checkmate. <laughs> made in his image. So, <laughs> while many insects are suspected to have uh, have ventured off to land for occasional forays, uh, scientists now believe with. Uh, I believe this is carbon date. Sorry, molecular clock dating. They believe that. The myriapod, the myriapod, a relative of the modern millipede, is the earliest direct evidence of an animal living and breathing on land. Can, can, can we talk about the phrase molecular clock dating? Oh, it yeah. sounds like a very aggressive way for molecules to date. <laughs> <laughs> like you just yeah like one of them walks over you're like yo you want to go on a date <laughs> say no yeah. well, i clock. dare you to say it, no <laughs> hey, it's, a clock. Clock it's, just, it's a speed dating it's a yeah, speed exactly. dating thing Papa, now you want to go on a date <laughs> we're molecular clock dating all right uh so 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 uh but, how, how big is this critter um, that's a good question. We do believe it has been dated to 425 million years old. Uh, that seems to be the new date, uh, which would edge out by, uh, other fossils of, uh, uh the, uh, other bugs and the, the Compacaris, I believe is the name of this fossil. So it beats out the other bugs by about 20 million years. How, how, how big? Uh, my thumbnail, my pinky, the gap between those two. Um, that's a good question about here. The size of a maggot. Yeah, I'm, I would say I'm looking at similar to a millipede or a centipede of today. So, I don't know, inches. Yeah. Yeah, there's a description here on Wikipedia that talk about the one cylinder long fragment of a fossil depicts kneels high in the body, long slender legs. I don't tell you how much. Yeah. But. I guess that makes sense oh, because here we go. Small, twenty to thirty millimeters. About about an inch long, the Campicaris. Boy, that really uh um that really technically uh meets those specifications. Boy, <laughs> Is it no, I, a I, technical I, victory? If, if, if I want to wax a little poetic, um, Earth pretty much sucked for a really long time. Like, it was either made of fire, mm -hmm. uh, then became the world's most boring ocean, and then I guess stuff got interesting underwater. And then the garbage what, what? truck it, showed up. Yeah. <laughs> then we learned then La we... Cucaracha. Wow. <laughs> well, well here's, here's the thing that's kind of really crazy about geology and even paleontology is that there are periods in Earth's history because if you think of the Earth and that crust is constantly sort of reshuffling itself and recycling itself over and over, there are periods that have happened where you had like a, enough of that happened or there was massive glaciation that took over the whole planet and you got ice age earth that ground everything down that you go into certain places and you will see where there is we don't know what happened we just see a bunch of ground like basically rock and sediment and stuff and like large stretches of time there are these blank slates in earth's history 
mm, mm. which is kind of freaky and weird. You know, like global, global periods of time when because of just the the circumstances, like that's where sort of the idea of snowball earth, one of the reasons that came from was, you know, periods of Earth's history, the earth was maybe completely covered in ice. Hey, uh, along those uh-huh. lines, uh, uh, Andrew, has there been a science fiction series uh, that, takes place in a world that is vibrant and alive and interesting and wild where high flying adventures of all varieties happen, but also they all happen to be occurring in the virtual world because in the physical planet, somebody looked at their watch and said, Oh yeah, it's going to be a thousand years of ice. What say we all go into pod form, have robots make our, children for us will just mainly live v- virtually has anyone done that i i don't know of that particular scenario um, um that kind of sounds like one of the philip k dick short stories where everyone lives underground and robots pretend to have war on the surface of earth i mean uh, i guess or the closest thing i guess it's making me think of is uh uh seven eves recently there's a uh, uh the moon explodes and there's a few different ways people try to survive the next thousand years. None of them terribly pleasant, all in wildly different directions. Um, but the idea of, I mean, of, of like life still being valuable and beautiful and wonderful and relationships being real, just all of it being <laughs> while our physical bodies are, you know, fro- frozen with eyes closed, experience virtual births, lives, marriages, and deaths. Uh, I, 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 I mm, sorry. Yeah. No, I mean, interesting premise. You know, you can, you can imagine a civilization that let's say they, they, uh, for whatever reason, like they never, you know, they, they were starting to have, you know, severe overpopulation issues and stuff. And then they started virtualizing people and not telling them. Mm-hmm. You know, like we don't want to kill anybody, but we'll virtualize you and you live into the sim or whatever. Like, yeah, there's, there's, you know, well, you we, can come up with, it's one of the things that support simulation theory, not as a factual way, but just as sort of a philosophical is you can come up with so many reasons for why this would happen. That, well, and we've talked before about the idea, uh, and I keep coming around to it is imagine a government that needs to stimulate its economy. And traditionally, there's only two ways to do that that's to, make your money worth less so people spend more it's easier to borrow or whatever or to um uh, uh to to directly fund things or whatever but but i'm increasingly fascinated with the pos- possibility of virtual consumers because like like the idea that no 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 we're going to build ai bots that are going to go out and judge various things on their worthiness and spend real money on them uh, and, and so, uh, uh, it sounds a lot like the selfish ledger thing that kind of leaked out of Google la- last year or the year before. Oh, I'm unfamiliar. Tell me about this. Oh, I, uh, oh, no, we, no, no, we talked no, about we watched it. This. You'll remember it when yeah, we, when yeah. we talk about it, but it's, uh, it was a leaked, uh, kind of futurism talk about, um, about an algorithm that would know what you want and was so interconnected to, um, an internet of things uh, sort of ecosystem that say it knew that you wanted a scale and then it would design and build and manufacture a scale that would look and have the feature set um, that you it knew you desired and it would be built such that you would use it and it would collect all of that data and so it would it would be a machine that would um, uh, spend your money and build tools and and devices and goods that also built itself. Yeah, I guess amongst so other that's, things. That's, that, that's close. I guess I guess the the idea of 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 uh, I don't know chasing them fake robot dollars, I, which we already do. Yeah, <laughs> On, but in, in, hello, and welcome Brian, to YouTube. <laughs> yeah, well, and Brian, to your point too, think about think about an era where you have an algorithm, and to Bryce's point, you know, Bryce has an algorithm. I have an algorithm I, that I say. Go out there, find me interesting things. And then that's sort of the virtual version of me. And it might go through and look at watch 500 videos to find the one that Andrew's going to want. And that could be sort of some form of that, you know, Um, because the end of the day, you have to figure out, can I say this, but then it makes, I'm going to say like Bitcoin sort of destroys my argument. Like you got to figure out where the value is created. Well, there is no value created in Bitcoin. So, you know, it's, it's a, you know, effectively it turns energy into, you know, beanie babies. So, um, 
you know, that's a, 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 a portion of the economy that works without actually creating real value, but other than some form of liquidity. So mm. I could see that, you know, there could be that, you know, oh, well, I've got, you know, bit followers. I've got 50,000 bit followers. And the more bit followers you have, the more value you have, the more likely real dollars will follow. Which just sounds like a longer version of social credit at some point. Yeah. Well, yeah, but it depends, like, you know, if it is it, you know, who is instituting it? You know, there's a difference between, you know, the Fed and Libra, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, you know, uh, what uh, we always accept is cold hard cash over at patreon.com slash weird (laughs) thing. Yeah. But actually in the the form of electronic or also Bitcoin. We'll take Bitcoin. Cold hard electrical cash. (laughs) No, the way that you give us money, there's only two ways. Either you take change and physical dollars and tape them to your computer or phone screen <laughs> until the weird things fairy comes and collects it by the way the only or, way that works is if every morning you wake up see that change taped to their monitor and scream why aren't you gone yet why are yeah. you still here and if it's there the next day it's because you didn't wish hard enough exactly or you can go to patreon.com slash weird things established in 1968 this is the new way to give us money from the future uh, uh patreon.com slash weird things 1968 yeah right. you can you can get a custom rss feed to get your uh, uh your podcast before anybody else before it goes out to the rest of the world specifically mm-hmm. the after things podcast friends if it were any easier you'd be doing it in your sleep Patreon.com slash weird thing. Also, this just in. Eventually. You literally could do it in your sleep. Yeah. You can actually do it in your sleep. In fact, Mm -hmm. all you have to do is go there once and then immediately go to sleep. (laughs) As a matter of fact, do it. You know what? Uh, Best thing you could do pull out your credit card, lay everything in front of you, take five Ambien. (laughs) Whatever happens with your fingers and that keyboard Mm -hmm. and that credit card information. Don't worry about it. You you just let wake up feeling good. Yeah, let that's your subconscious between, do it. That's between you and Mithras. That's right, <laughs> and it's legal too. Whatever happens, it's a is fun legal. game. Here's the no game we like to play. Uh, for every Ambien you take, hit another zero, <laughs> then hit enter. Yeah, the, that's take, how you win. Take, is if you can take, hit enter by before you take, die. Take the Patreon challenge. <laughs> take. <laughs> Take Ambien, and every time that you are wondering what's happening, hit another zero on your Patreon pledge. I swear to God, if we become like millionaires tomorrow, I'll feel very conflicted. I really won't know how to feel about it. But the, they, the, 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 the people paying won't. They won't. No, they're no, good. No, no, no. Well, well, because what the, the conflict I'll feel is how much of a commission I need to give to the Ambien Corporation. <laughs> zero! <That's>, <laughs> zero! <laughs> okay. Yeah. They have all no, this R&D the fun. Rack. That's they off the rack. We don't need to, <laughs> we don't need to Amb- license it. Hello, welcome to Ambicore. I'm Jonathan Do you Ambien. remember anything? Uh, well, let's talk. Okay. Hey, you know what we should talk about? We're, you know, one thing, one of the unforeseen effects of the coronavirus, COVID-19, uh, is that people are... Well, how about this? Let, let me tell you this. You could say it. What are you, some you of could say it. Hair's getting longer. What are some of the silver linings hair, out of COVID nineteen? Hair is getting very long. No, you love your hair. <laughs> I mean, uh-huh. I, I, I ain't nobody said I love it. I'm just saying it's a fact, Jack. Okay. Uh, that we all love the Beatles more because we appear to be them. All right, can, 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 can we can we do a quick round table? How's how's your hairs? Because three of the panelists wearing hats. Pretty sure it's because we're all ashamed of our hair. Let's see it. Okay. Beetle. Uh, Andrew is uh, uh, Ring, also. Uh, George Harrison. Uh, and then flock Justin. of seagulls. Flock of seagulls. Yeah. And, and Andrew's a little a little bit of a, the, the cabin writer, the writer in the cabin. Justin's kind of, well, and it just everyone's, oh, everyone's smashing their hair dog. down. Justin's a sheepdog. Yeah, yeah, he's kind of yeah. got a sheepdog thing going. He used to be K-pop. Now he's Cousin It. Oh, unfortunate. He went from BTS to ITS. He went from BTS to <laughs> WTF. Yeah. Of course, I've got a shaver, so my under my half undercut still looks. Sorry. Uh, uh, the co- um. Okay. So, uh, so what are some? Of, so what are some of the other? Uh, say, say silver linings out of COVID nineteen and a lot of the uh, social distancing, staying at home. Uh, uh, policies yeah, not and having ideas. to make excuses to to not to leave my house. 
<laughs> okay, okay. Easy, easy to stay inside. Wish, wish I'd thought of this COVID thing earlier, man. Am I right? Am I right? <laughs> um, man, I guess silver linings. Man, everybody has an excuse to do anything selfish ever, always. Like, I can't think of a single self-indulgent thing that I know I probably shouldn't indulge in. I mean, like, like I might start trying heroin because COVID. I mean, <laughs> I mean, why not? It's COVID. And for legal reasons, that is a parody. So. Yeah, it's not a thing. Uh, okay. Won't try heroin. Okay, so a little but he more. Might. But he won't. <laughs> <laughs> also, maybe a little more, uh, a little more uh, selfish acts, a little more hedonism. So maybe some more heroin, says Brian. I will say that yeah. there's like a one to one correlation between uh, infatuation with white claws and coronavirus. So <laughs> I, 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 I'm not going to say that the one is orchestrated by the other, but who I, if I could have had a time machine and bought stock in white claw. Mm hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. Justin, what, what can you think of any any maybe, maybe something in the realm of this podcast purview? <laughs> oh, uh, I mean, you, what, what you see is everybody saying that nature is healing, Bryce. You know, you mm. have uh, uh, you have all the the animals are now uh, uh, venturing out to places that they wouldn't have otherwise because there's not so many people mucking it up for them. Actually. Uh, Serious answer. Uh, I, I, if I'm hearing you right, Justin, you're talking about um, <clears throat> we've seen some pictures of like uh, smog covered cities that are now clear and, and fish that are swimming in cleaner waters and all that stuff. Uh, yeah. But if I was going to point to one thing slightly political is that um, uh, uh, the U.S. in particular has a long history of taking pride in the fact that that we like to move very slowly on allowing medical trials to happen because, you know, for safety's sake. And there have been a number of times that that has worked in our favor. For example, uh, thalidomide was not the disaster here in the United States that it was in the 1960s in Europe because we had a longer vetting period for new uh, uh, drugs. Uh, man, that seems all out the window right now with COVID is just like... Who wants to voluntarily sign up to, for crazy ass COVID vaccines? Uh, say yeah, and 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 uh, so 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 I think that might be a weird silver lining is that um, America seems to be opening itself up to the idea of voluntary crazy experimentation of things. Okay. All right. Interesting. Well, I, I think, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. If, I don't know if the experimentation per se is different, but certainly the approval of uh, uh those are are rapidly rapidly sped up i think you still probably need to experiment the same number it's just a matter of how many experiments you have to do and uh how long you have to wait to make sure that somebody didn't die six months later from taking your drug okay um i'd say uh uh pretty good any other last guesses here i think m in medical is 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 kind of a close kind of close here any other last thoughts before we show you what show you the thing <laughs> we all casually glance over at andrew <laughs> i'm trying to like phrase the question again like what's acceptable that what wasn't before or? no 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 i'm so, just thinking silver, silver linings. linings that are happening right now because of this crazy situation yeah and and my yeah, my, I mean, vote, my vote was that uh uh uh, uh, uh <laughs> here's my vote is six months ago the stated biggest epidemic to be fixed was vaping <laughs> Now the stated thing to be fixed is an actual disease. <laughs> and yeah, I'd rather the, the like stated... that we're focused on something besides e-cigarettes. Yeah, the stated epidemic to fix was a thing that was saving the lives of thousands of smokers. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I'm rather I, I mean I mean there's nothing to be jazzed yeah. about, but but it seems to yeah. me like uh hey, uh that is 
that that is definitely the war on vaping is our new like Britney Spears with the snake and like the nation longs to care about stupid BS again <laughs> like uh, that onion yeah. cover. The, the war on vaping was the summer of the shark and then 9/11 happened and we were like why were we even talking about sharks? What was that? Yeah. <laughs> why were remember, we why do we care the... about Yeah. Yeah, uh, New York City banning sodas. You know, that was <laughs> Sodas. <laughs> Bloomberg's big thing. He took yeah. off big sodas and made us buy two smaller sodas. That was his um, greatest achievement. So, so positive things have happened. Like clearly, like like from a, I would there's an argument made from a health point of view. We've talked about this before that because of the rapid advancements, the push towards fast developments, infectious diseases were probably far fewer people are going to die in the next few decades from infectious diseases than before because we've accelerated so much development and taking this seriously. Um, so we know that. The, the idea of telemedicine at home, the lifting the restrictions allowed you to talk to your doctor and do that via Skype, which people didn't realize you weren't supposed to, you couldn't do before, that's amazing. Uh, um, uh, along that same line, can I double down on that and say that um, uh, millions of parents are realizing that their children are being sent to school allegedly to be taught all day but there's only about 90 minutes of learning those kids are doing every single day. Everything else is daycare and socializing or whatever, which I, I understand we, we, we can't constantly have our kids with us all the time. But, but I don't think as a society there's been in 100 years a moment that, that parents have had to face that fact more head on than right now. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I would say that I know I read an article the other day talked about the helium shortage is, uh, wow. you know, kind of an exposed for not being the shortage that we thought it was. Yeah. So with uh, party balloons and parties, uh, uh, demand for parties dropping off of a cliff uh, per this physics today. <gasps> oh, did you land on it? Uh, helium you shortage has it. ended. <laughs> At least for I, now. I found I, I found the article. He sent I, me I, that okay, 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 all right. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so so people uh, may know party balloons accounted for about ten percent of worldwide helium demand, and now that uh, there are less parties happening, uh, there is more helium freed up for scientists and medical engineers. Uh, though interestingly, costs um, have not really come down per some of the reports, despite the fact that supply is in, in much greater demand. Um, right now, uh, the U.S. outputs about 68 million cubic meters of helium and uses about 40 million cubic meters. Um, let's see. Uh, there's also... Uh, uh, there, there's... there's I, I, we still don't know if this is a shortage or a windfall of helium either right because this is so possibly I, temporary what's up can man? i explain yeah just to briefly the helium sh the helium shortage is one of those kind of very poorly understood things and there is a limit to the amount of natural resources on our planet absolutely planets certain size what have you and certain things other than like meteor rock just don't come back um Helium, the helium you use today is a byproduct generally from natural gas production. You get a bunch of natural gas, you actually find there's going to be helium in the same areas in which you're, you're, you're procuring your natural gas from. It's expensive to get the helium from natural gas, but it's there. And we now have the largest amounts of natural gas reserves we've ever, we way exceeded whatever expectations we've had on natural gas. Nobody really talks about noticing more about an oil shortage or anything like that. You know, it's 2020. We were supposed to run out of everything, and now we found out, like, wow, the people who said we we're going to have more of it than we ever realized were right. And because helium, like it comes from natural gas, the ability to get it's there. It's just always been the cost. It wasn't cost effective because we controlled the prices of helium. We'd say the price. This is the price. This is what you sell it for. Whatever the government would sell it at below a certain rate because of the you know national helium reserve, et cetera. I mean, I'm trying to simplify things, but basically, we never had a shortage. What we had was we had an artificial market, which created an artificial scarcity. And then, ah, and then people were like, oh, run out of helium. Well, yes, in a million year term, yes, we are running out of helium. In the next 10,000 years, absolutely not. It's just not cheap, you know, because it takes some amount of effort to extract it. And now there's been a fall in demand on helium because less party balloons, other stuff. And now people are like, oh, I can get helium now. I can get it for my experiments and stuff. It's cheaper now. And so, well, you know, and, that and, was and the hard part. It's, it's legit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say two things that are true. 
it is scary to think about the fact that the only way to get more helium on planet Earth is to invent a, a better form of fusion and take two hydrogens and make a helium or whatever, which is uh, right now very, very energy intensive or whatever. So you could truly, fairly, in your mind, think of helium as a truly limited resource. Separately, I can say the same about hydrogen. Hydrogen. Correct. Correct. Even though it's the most abundant thing in the universe, right? Uh, separately, and this is this and is helium something... being the second most abundant. <laughs> correct. Uh, separately, this is this is a fact that every time I say it out loud, I sound even to my own ears as a crazy person. Uh, the planet has never, ever, ever run out of any non-renewable resource. We've run out of many renewable resources because we overtaxed, overfarmed, weren't able to replicate enough of them or whatever. There are things that have gone extinct or whatever, but hum humanity has never, ever run out of a single non-renewable resource. Sounds so wrong uh, coming out of my own dumb face, but 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 seems to be the case. Uh, if anyone has a counterexample, let me know. Yeah, uh, there's a great, if you go to uh, Wikipedia, look abundance of the chemical elements and you see within the universe, um, the abundance of things and even go within our own solar system. Uh, uh, hydrogen is, you know, the most abundant and helium is the second. And by the way, helium, if you look at the ratio of like uh, mass fraction in parts per million, hydrogen 705,000, helium 275,000, third oxygen 9,000, like there is like, 20 times as much helium in our solar system as there is oxygen. Yeah. So, you know, on Earth it's different, but again, it's pretty important. <laughs> it's overrated. It's just mostly just a, what you're used to. You're thinking of air, which is mostly nitrogen. We don't even know if they need the oxygen, really. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, when and it, I ain't that, but that, go ahead, sorry, Brian. Uh, sorry. One of the other interesting parts of, the, of this article is so, so like, like Andrew mentioned, uh, li liquid nitrogen. Uh, sorry, liquid. Oh man, let me make sure I get the right right. Liquid, liquefied natural gas tends to be how we get a lot of our he our helium because helium is a pro uh, is a byproduct of that process. But as the demand for fossil fuel goes down, um, uh, there is being they are advising prospectors to look for helium alone, not just natural gas, but just helium. Uh, I guess. Uh, uh, deposits can, uh, can, can i just say that i had forgotten that prospectors are still a thing and i just had this wonderful image of a guy with a pickaxe being told now here's where you want to go find yourself a chuck of cheese there's lots of helium around there because there's always having yeah. parties <laughs> he's uh, got a donkey too don't forget the donkey got yeah. donkey. Always going, <laughs> your pots <laughs> and pans <laughs> clanging <laughs> he's got the <laughs> He's got the overalls, but only one of them is tied, and it's tied to the other shoulder. It's a cross. <laughs> His name's yeah. Pete. <laughs> Sorry, he yeah. Pete. Uh, there is one company, Helium One, uh, that is looking to develop uh, a few locations in the Tanzania Rift Valley, uh, where they've detected helium gases. There, they believe that the gases are about 10% helium, uh, compared to other locations where they extract helium, where it can be 0.3 and 0.1% helium. So... Um, as prospectors start looking for uh, helium-specific sites, uh, we might see even more of a supply so, so, so uh, readily words, available. Right now, we have, quote-unquote, plenty of helium, and it's all just dandruff from another product that we really care about in the form of uh, uh, LNG, liquid nat uh, natural gas, right? Uh, partially, I believe, yeah. Um, and, well, and, and yeah, and, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, and I remember, like, but Brian, I was like, we're constantly producing helium in our core from radioactive decay. decay. So, now, you know. This is new to me. I thought that all the helium we had w just happened to be trapped. I, I was not aware that we had any, uh, any way to create new helium outside of fusing two hydrogens on purpose. But, but, but uh, uh, tell, uh, talk to me more, more about the core decay. Well, because our, remember our core is radioactive and as part of the decay, one of the byproducts it gives off is helium. So that's one of the other places that it's being produced. But most of the stuff that you have, like, yeah, it's actually came from when the solar system formed, that's where it came from. But, and that, the amount of helium there is, you know, we're gonna be mining, you know, helium in space clouds and stuff before we ever have to worry about running out of it on earth. You know, and it was one of those, to me, it was always sort of frustrating because you would hear, I'd see scientific, you know, 
uh, outlets, news media, whatever, talk about, oh, the helium, we're running out. It's like, no, you're not. <laughs> you know, talk to somebody, you know, you're running out of the, they're, you're run, they're cheap helium, people willing to make it cheaply is there. We're not running out of helium. It's just the easy to get like anything else. And there's just not a big enough market for somebody to, but now like Bryce pointed out, it's helium one. They're like, yeah, no, we're looking at like, we think there's enough of a market. We'll go do it. It's one of the reasons why people have gone like, oh, like literally people thought about like, maybe we don't build airships because helium is expensive and we're not going to get you more air helium. It's like, well, maybe if we had airships, we would be increasing our helium production and just mining specific helium and then problem solved. Yeah, not 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 to crawl too far into our own butts, but uh, this this does tend <laughs> to be one of our favorite topics to come back to is is the world being more abundant than you would intuitively think, you know, we talked about how uh, uh, aluminum used to be so extraordinarily rare that Napoleon, you know, had forks and knives made out of it. And nowadays, it's so cheap that, you know, we may, you know, we, it's cheaper than tin or, or what, what have you. Um, like, uh, I, 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 I'll be curious what happens when we figure out a brand new, super exciting, really good use for helium, how that'll change things. Yeah, and whippets don't count. Um, and, and just to side note, the way to look at it is one of the reasons why we were hesitant to use oil in any sort of mass scale was that oil used to be a thing that you just found on the surface pools. You know, you go somewhere and you'd find a little pond of oil. Like, oh, look, there's some oil there. Yay, there's oil. That's cool stuff. You got to refine it to pain in the ass, but I guess it's worth it. But it's not like all these whales we have, <laughs> right. you know, that we can go get you <laughs> Where know, it already oil has from. the perfect right type of fuel to put in, in these, uh, <laughs> you know, buckets to light on fire. Yeah. And then and then somebody's like, ah, we'll just take this oil out of these, you know, these puddles and ponds. And we have, oh, there's bubbling up a little more. OK, that's cool. But, you know, we're going to run out of these. There's only so many of these ponds and lakes filled with oil, you know, and then you're done. And then someone's like, what if we drilled a hole? <laughs> like, oh, wow, there's more oil here. And they're like, yeah, but those were running out of oil, those holes. And somebody's like, what if we dig, dug a deeper hole? <laughs> no, it won't be down there. You're not going to find it. There's nothing to be found there. It's a waste of your time. Holy cow, there's a lot of oil here. Like, yeah, but then some of it's in rocks and stuff. Like, what if we use the material to sort of separate the rocks and create fractures? Ah, it's expensive. won't be worth it. They're like, oh, my God, now we have more than we need ever. Uh, yeah, man. And, and now now we're at a point where, uh, like, like we've just lost. It's become oil has become boring in our lifetime. <laughs> like, yeah. like, who cares? Yeah. Um, one last story here. We got to we got to give a shout out to a real one. Um, if I say the name Saturn. What do you think of? I, I wish his name was Happy Earn. Uh, tr trouble uh, professional wrestler Perry Saturn. Uh, GM trying to innovate out the Japanese, but not <laughs> Sega overrunning its market share. Oh, okay, sure. The, the Sega Saturn. Uh, well, uh, my Prague rock band from 1978 that a, I don't talk about. A car, whether I'm not certain, still exists. <laughs> uh, well, that was the GM thing. The GM yeah. Saturn. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, there's... Right. we tap out. All Hold right. Uh, wait, no, no, no. There's got to be other Saturns. Come on. Okay. Uh, no, Brian. Saturn. We ran. We said the ball. That's all. That's uh, all oh, uh, vessel holding the desiccated corpse of a loved one that also is imbued with the power of emotions a and sad is sad. Urn. Yes, okay. yes, that's where I'm at. A a sad a urn. Urn. That's where I was all going. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, We're tapping out now. <laughs> uh, you might uh, know Saturn as the second oldest alligator. Uh, you may also, oh, yes, you may also have heard, uh, the tall tale that Saturn, who has just recently passed away, was Hitler's pet alligator. <gasps> now that is a tall tale with what? no proven what? track record of yeah. being true at all, but that is the story every, <laughs> everyone. What is complicated about uh, that legacy? That is, I... <laughs> I avoided this story because it wasn't even like old Hitler. There was just so nothing to it, you oh, know, okay. that it was like clearly I no, it's fine. I'm you I'm glad you did. I but, just was like mm. uh, it was most certain very disappointing to find out this is not Hitler's alligator. That, oh, it's not? Yeah. No. There's, That's the complication. That that is part of it. It's funny. It's like it's, finding out that the Tiger King's tigers didn't belong to him. <laughs> 
yeah. in a way. Uh, yeah, they like certainly don't anymore. In, in this Vice article, Hitler's alligator leaves behind complicated legacy at a Moscow zoo. It's not until like the, the final paragraph where they say, "It's not even. No one has any proof that this is Hitler's. It just so happened to be that Saturn was in the Berlin Zoo uh, since 1936, or he was he was shipped to the Berlin Zoo uh, after he was born in 1936." and survived World War II uh, before spending his days in uh, a Moscow zoo. Uh, they, th- and I think that is where kind of the tall tale of, oh, this was this might have been Hitler's alligator. I think at one point they even named him Hitler uh, in the Moscow zoo <laughs> very briefly uh, until they landed on the name Saturn. It, there is sort of like yeah, a, there... whether or not Jumbo was the world's biggest elephant, uh, it is a fact that that elephant lived a life being marketed as the world's biggest elephant. And even in its afterlife, Jumbo was taken on tour as two copies of Jumbo, one being uh, taxidermied outside of Jumbo, the other being the skeleton of Jumbo. Mm -hmm. So it's like at some point, the question of whether or not it was the world, whether or not it was Hitler, Hitler's alligator ceases to be the most interesting part of the story. The fact <laughs> is, it lived and, and, and toured as that. Yeah. Um, in fact, uh, Saturn will be stuffed and placed on display at the State Darwin Museum, a, bio- a biology museum in Moscow. So uh, Saturn is likely the world's second oldest alligator of all time. The first is belonging to an alligator that is still alive called uh, Muja in uh, Serbia. Okay. Uh, n- have, have Muja's any of us... just stunting on everybody. Mm-hmm. Still alive. How old do you think Muja is, Justin? Uh, well, I just looked at the. Oh, dark on it. Okay. But... Right <laughs> what was the answer? Uh, uh, well, it was hatched around 1936. So, okay. uh, well, your way to now. Well, so. Yeah. Saturn was hatched uh, in uh, the wild in Mississippi in 1936. Muja uh, was reported to have already been an adult alligator in 1936. So while there's no exact date, they do believe it to be older than Saturn. Damn. Well, why don't they just ask him? (laughs) So, so, uh, yeah. So there's the stories uh, for the week. Anybody got some uh, picks? (laughs) I just want to picture one of these alligators like responding to a Facebook quiz that says only 30 alligators will know this reference. Yeah. <laughs> the green thumbs up. <laughs> Emotion emoticon. All right. Uh got any picks anybody? Uh uh yeah, hey, social credit score. We were talking about that. It reminded me of an episode of Community that I saw last night called Meow Meow Beans. It's very funny. <laughs> And I, uh, I, I am, I am continually uh, delighted after suffering through season four, uh, season five, after like the first two episodes, really, really, really have gotten on track. And uh, uh, the Meow Meow Beans episode was uh, was particularly prescient, considering the issue uh, that they are talking about, where the entire School gets caught up in a new beta tested app where all you do is just rate your friends one through five constantly. Uh, is that a social caste system develops uh, wherein fives have lives, fours have chores, threes have fleas, twos have blues, and ones don't get a rhyme because they're garbage? <laughs> yeah. It was that was one of those episodes I thought was one of the things community doing what it does really well building a crazy world within this world of like, Hey, we have a community college environment, Mm -hmm. you know, let's build a really crazy world there. And they've done that wonderfully. So that was always where it was sort of the most fun. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, that looks like it's called app development and condiments. So I don't know what they've put in the water, but boy is Spotify convincing me to listen to more and more Spotify original podcasts, uh, the latest of which Mm -hmm. is called... Brian, shut your mouth! ...is called Wind of Change. Have have any of you guys heard of this? About farting? No. It is about the 
assertion, the thesis, the opening the uh, serial music plays. You're like, uh, I'm Justin Robert Young, and I have one question. Was I host serial now? <laughs> was the 1990 <laughs> hair metal hit "Wind of Change" by the Scorpions actually written by the CIA? Somehow we're going to get eight episodes out of this. It's me, Justin Robert Young. <laughs> huh. <laughs> and so um, uh, it's, I, 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 everything I said sounds dumb, and it is, but uh, in some amount of it is just talking about the band Scorpion. Um, some amount of it, though, is an awesome dive, deep dive into some of the weird uh, wet works activities that the CIA has done over the years. Uh, the second episode talks about how they, um, uh, they, they, they recruited uh, jazz musicians to put, uh, you know, American jazz and make it popular throughout the world or whatever. But the, but the specific question is a little bit ridiculous. The, the question of that sweet, sweet whistling hook that all of us know. Um, and, and, and did, uh, you know, was that a government plot? And the answer so far is maybe. <laughs> I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> Interesting, because I know we there's there's a lot that we know of in terms of, say, the Department of Defense, right? Like the Department of Defense funds a lot of creative projects, right? They they put a lot of money into like sporting events, which is kind of why. Uh, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's why uh, we do. Uh, the national anthem at football events uh, or sporting events in general is because of uh, of influence from the military. Uh, uh, yes, 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 and no. There, there, specifically with football, there was a big thing uh, where the Department of Defense was paying to uh, have members of the military like on the field and stuff like that. Uh, but I don't know if, if, I mean, maybe there's like a history of these programs and that's why we do the, pre the, the pledge of allegiance and stuff or, or the, the national anthem rather, uh, at the beginning of, uh, sporting events from the very beginning. But, uh, that, that specific issue mm. was, uh, was something that was about the NFL stadium. Oh no. And the flyovers, the flyovers, and the flyovers. Like, that was like also part of the flyover. Or just like funding movies, right? Uh, fun funding movies yeah. to have pro pro military uh, slants on them it is it is funny to have it flip from the very serious topic of you know the cold war like like uh one 15 minute segment will be explaining about a lost uh soviet sub that had nuclear armaments on it and how they realized that the u.s had found it before they uh before the russians even knew that the u.s had found it they needed to cover it up by contacting Howard Hughes to make up a fake project that involved going and, and creating a boat big enough to just, you know, send down a crane claw like you're trying to win a stuffed animal. Only you get half Glow of a nuclear explore. sub. Like, like, so, so, so you get this very serious stuff and then you get, you know, just tonal shift of, of like, but let's talk about the Scorpions. <laughs> Yeah. And, and this is what their music usually sounds like. Isn't it weird that this one ballad would come out of this? Also, let's let's hear that that whistling hook and tell the story of the time that somebody came to his hotel room, said, I'm from the CIA. Please whistle. Wind of change. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Which is apparently something that happens. It's a really weird, wonderful ride. I think you guys will like it. Whoa. Very cool. Winds of change. Yeah, I was uh, look up the Glomer Explorer, and that's just a crazy sort of thing where Hughes got paid like three hundred million dollars to build this boat oh, to recover oh, as, a submarine. As, as a matter of fact, they explain that was the incident that created the phrase "can neither confirm nor deny." That never existed until hmm. this. This was the incident hmm. that made the CIA come up with that response, and uh, and. The guy, you know, the 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 Justin Robert Young host uh, of of this podcast, who's on a miss mission, he gets glomered. He eventually pushes back against the FOIA dismissal and says, "No, this is uh, fairly what you're saying doesn't make sense." And then finally, he gets a letter that says, "We will neither confirm nor deny <laughs> that we wrote the song Winds of Change. <laughs> this is our final exchange." <laughs> wow. <laughs> Crazy. Well, again, that's also the habit of like 
one, do you never confirm or deny just about anything? Two, sometimes they don't know. You know, like there's even, you know, there may have oh, been. Yeah. There is like, there are CIA projects that fund startups that work in, let's say, encryption. And like not breaking them, but like creating stuff. Like I knew somebody was involved with one of these. It was a VC firm funded by the CIA. And I'm not talking spirits like this is like a legit like head of company, whatever. Like, oh, yeah, we, we've got the project we're doing with, you know, the CIA where we're doing venture capital in sort of area. I'm like, it's like insane. It's like insane. But then you go around the D.C., Virginia area and you see lots of companies and crazy things and that, that there could be like uh, Patriot Music Publishing, <laughs> you know, could be. Oh, no, yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. There there might be like a CIA company or organization funding Ranchera music in Latin America and stuff to try to, for whatever purpose and stuff. Well, and, and th- there's equally bizarre stories like um, uh, before he was assassinated, uh, uh, Kennedy recognized that we needed to stop the Cold War. And uh, Khrushchev also understood that. And so he gave this, this uh, one particular impassioned speech about ending the Cold War. And on the Russian side, they intentionally unjammed the Voice of America radio stations of that speech because uh, they were like, "This is the greatest. Uh, this is the greatest case to end the Cold War that we could think of." And then you know things got a little bit nutty. Uh, other things happened, but yeah, mm-hmm. cool. Um, uh, I got a pick. Uh, so this this came out a couple weeks ago, and I um. I, I've 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 enjoyed it and I've gone back to it many 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 times. Uh, it's it's getting to be summertime, and I don't know if the song of the summer is quite on this album, but I do think that this is uh, a really fantastic one. Uh, it is the new Lady Gaga album, Chromatica. Uh, I think this is a great album. I think that this is like a a big big return to form. Uh, it's all dance music. Um, even I, I'd say. There's a there are a few down tempo songs, but I wouldn't even say that there's a ballad on the album. Uh, it's it's great. Um, it is very house music inspired. Uh, it is very uh, '90s kind of like late '80s French house or Italian house music um, inspired. But uh, I, I think it's great. I really think it's great, and it's worth worth listening to. Um, even if even if you're not a diehard Lady Gaga fan. Um, uh, specifically, if you're looking for picks, I think uh, the uh, the Ariana Grande ooh uh, feature. <laughs> that's a joke for Brian and Justin. The Ariana Grande oh, feature, <laughs> uh, "Rain on Me," is very is very good. That's got a really cool music video. I also think that uh, "Replay" is a lot of fun. Um, also, the 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 weird the weirdest one for me on the album, and I like it, is uh, called "Babylon," which is. Boy, it sounds a lot like Madonna's Vogue. <laughs> it sounds, it but sounds, it, but it's about the series of articles titled "The Richest Man in Babylon." So the lyrics are like, uh, <clears throat> "Save ten percent of all you make. They're like soldiers working for you. Come on, save, save your money and become rich." Is that is that is kinda? That <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, it's about gossip, but it's a uh, it's 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 it. <laughs> it gets to the part she just lists off all the um, uh, Lincoln, Franklin, uh, <laughs> Hamilton, uh, Washington. She just names presidents who are on bills. Never mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, there we go. Uh, I think I think it's a very cool album. Uh, I've been playing it nonstop pretty much for the past two weeks and it's shifting. I think that it's a good sign of an album where my favorites keep shifting. Um, you know, the, the stuff that I really didn't like on my first listen, I've like grown to really enjoy. And then the stuff I liked at first, I'm, I'm seeing what sort of depth there are to it. I, th- I think it's really great. I think it's really cool. So, uh, Chromatica from Lady Gaga. Andrew, you got a pick? I've got sort of two things to talk about. Um, first is like, man, I watch McMillions. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Sorry. Say it again. Say it again. It's funny every time you say it because only one of us on the panel made it all the way to the end on purpose. Go ahead. Say it again. I love it. I'm going to use my stock joke here. And again, I don't, who working with networks is crazy and I don't want to blame anybody because who knows, who knows? I'm just going to say, this is what I said before. Like 
I felt like I got a harsher sentence than the people in the show did for what they did by having to do <laughs> all McMillions. <laughs> like, you, you get to the end of it and you're like, yeah, it's what I read in the Atlantic article or wherever it was. Yeah, yeah it's not that long it. of a story. It's not a six hour story. <laughs> Oh my God! I was. I, I watched, Turns out the I fast watched, food game was crooked. Is that the pitch? Nope, that's the whole well, story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who was it? Yeah, we, we already knew. We, hey, this guy. Uh, who? Who's stealing these pieces? I don't know. Maybe the guy that you assigned to hide the pieces. It's maybe the guy <laughs> who keeps who's winning. Who's stealing the pieces? It's the guy who you know? his entire family keeps winning the damn thing. Well, yeah. I mean, why are all these? You know, pe- and they're, and they're, they're, they, they talk to a reporter. Who is like, uh, uh, yeah, you know, we probably should have realized the fact that everybody was waiting was in like the southeastern United States for like a hundred mile radius. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, maybe, maybe. You know, the, the, when I read the article, I was like, it kind of, it, the more we've talked about it, the more I'm realizing like, oh, it's like when you find out the method to a magic trick. It's mm-hmm. like, the the more the most exciting you ever are in the story is one guy kept winning the the McDonald's monopoly thing and all you think of is every time you went and got two of the pieces but can never get the third and all the stories of like oh you know they spread them out all over the country and you'd really have to go across the country if you wanted to even have a chance and so you start thinking much in the same way that you that you would when you see a magic trick all the wrong possible things and then when you find out that the method is like oh no it's a hidden thing it's just like oh it's, well, that's a lot less interesting than like me thinking of this like crazy guy who's figured out the mathematics uh, probability and like, is like winning and like crack this it's, code. It's, it's like it's just eight, petty theft. It's yes. eight hour long episodes of Six. how that chicken was able to beat you at tic-tac-toe at the fair yeah. <laughs> yeah. like the obvious the most obvious thing would be the guy in charge of securing the pieces is the one who did it and, would be the and it's a story and it is a story that involves uh one of the guys uh the one of the guy, the guy who was his fence for helping to move him was a member of the colombo crime family mm. and you're like oh yeah. great this is gonna be interesting we're gonna go a deep dive into this no, we're gonna talk about Columbo's wife and her, you know, her passion for crazy dressing like a crazy Italian lady. That's it. That's His it. Name that, that's all you're gonna get. Was Cornelius found on a farm in the outskirts of Western Ohio? <sighs> but first, we need to learn how does tic tac toe work? When well, is it played? <laughs> Who plays tic tac toe? Why? <laughs> That's my warning sign when, like, I pick up like a when I pick up a biography that's like a four hundred page. I'm like, oh, good. Walt Elias Disney's great, great, great grandfather. Like, screw you. Like, like I don't. That has nothing to do with him at all. You know, and like, and like you're like hundred pages in, and then when his great, you know, his aunt, you're like, this is not you. You just didn't have anything to say. Um, man, I I I, I, I had that with. With, with one of the Barry Goldwater books that I read where it's like they trace they, the first three chapters are just like all about his great, great grandparents. And it's like I was writing a script this weekend and I'm like, yeah, that's definitely a sentence. Like descended <laughs> from that. the people that founded Phoenix and we're good. Well, like, Webster's Dictionary defines tic-tac-toe <laughs> as a game played in a grid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah my, my rule of thumb on that is Tic-tac-toe, like, also known as crosses and knots, originated. <laughs> my, my rule of thumb on like, should you include it? Like, hey, if you were later on into the story, would you mention this as a flashback? And like, oh no, it would slow things down. Then like, yeah, leave then it it's out. it's not important. Um, yeah. So uh, I watched on HBO did a documentary uh, inventor uh, the story <gasps> out for blood the story of, of Theranos uh, and re- b- b- before you Elizabeth continue Holmes. just 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 to put a button on it how excited would all of us be for a documentary about the making of McMillions. <laughs> <laughs> no, and if maybe if it was only like ten minutes or something. Because it's, Queeby, it's two Queeby, people call me. in a con. <laughs> It's in a conference room with two people. We just got a call from HBO. They're short, like, you know, Watchmen didn't get the audience they wanted, and they really need content. Um, can you stretch this six, this three into six? Yeah, we'll yeah. make it work. We've got some extra footage. Done. Okay. Hey, editor, <laughs> make this into six. Okay. You know, 
that's it. Yeah. It's not like not like a lot of creativity went into it. <laughs> you know? Um so I did like the other HBO documentary I did like, uh, which was an Alex Gibney documentary. I like it with a couple asterisks here. It was about uh, Elizabeth Holmes. She was the creator of the company Theranos, which was supposed to do all these amazing blood tests. And it's a great example of like, she had people like that got, that company had like billions in financing or, you know, you know hundreds of millions of financing a valuation of like $9 billion. She had, if you look at her board of advisors, it was an incredible array of people across the political you know, spectrum. George Schultz, okay? You had Richard Mathis. You had just these incredible... Her her attorney was David Boyes, who was uh, 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 Al Gore's attorney during the recount. Her assistant was Hillary Clinton's assistant. I mean, and it was right and left. She had all these political figures from everywhere. And then people like, I had a friend, and I got to call him out on this. He's like, yeah, there was really no sign that she was a fraud. And I'm like, no, the sign that she was a fraud... All of her advisors were political and business people and not scientists. That's yeah. the thing. When she's got this most innovative thing and there's not a – her board of advisors is not people she's accumulated over the years, that's a, that's symptomatic of fraud. Um, or the idea that why won't this person who's known you the longest work with this? Why aren't these people in these fields excited to work with you about this? It's because it's kind of – that's one of the, the – you look at the omission. What's missing there? People are like, oh, no, she had all these amazing people. Like, yeah, who knew jack all nothing about science? It's a really neat documentary. I would say that if anything, the thing that's frustrating, they don't go into the early years. And also is the fact that she was, she started this company at 19 and her business partner, I'm going to pull up the name of this guy who gets a little bit of attention here, but not anywhere near as much as you should think, because he's this older guy who had helped start a company before. And it's kind of like um, uh, Ramesh Sunny Balwani. I'm like, let way too little focus on him because how does this 19 year old woman create this billion dollar organization? It does not happen. Nobody, nobody does that by themselves, particularly a 19 year old. You do that by being enabled and they just did not go anywhere enough into Balwani, which I thought was like, there's much more going on here. Mm. So cool. That's that. That's my pick, but still enjoyed it. I wish they did that. I could have watched six episodes on that yeah. would have been great. Uh, this says this also, is from the guy I, who did going clear also. Yeah, Alex Gibney. Yeah, what? nice. Yeah, uh, yeah. Gibney does a lot of stuff. Like oh. he is, he is fairly pro uh, prolific. Hmm. Yeah. There we go. Uh, and then I watched Space Force. Space Force is all right. <laughs> all right. That's fine. For, for audio listeners, there was a very, a very love... dismissive Andrew head shake. Let me tell you how much I love Greg Daniels' new show, Upload. That was amazing. I loved Upload. Upload was really fun. Upload's a great example when you're grounded, when you know what your reality is, and your expectations from scene to scene don't shift dramatically because at one point you're watching a cartoon, and the next moment you're supposed to have something that there's a lot of gravitas. That's why I loved Upload so much. And that's what's important about comedy is consistent characters, consistent in understanding the comedies, and jokes that land. Yeah. I'll say about Space Force, Space Force is out at a weird time where – uh, uh, Steve Carell's character who is the head of the new Space Force uh, is definitely like portrayed as kind of an oaf who doesn't know what he's doing and isn't in actual control and yet in the first two or three episodes I've seen he still like wins and everyone congratulates and praises him for winning which I I think is always a very tough thing to be like uh, well, bum, like I think it works when you're Michael Scott and you're in a comp and it's like, oh, it's a company. But when you're like, uh, here's dumb bureaucrats and it's all just, uh, uh, you know, confidence and, and you know, uh, well, grit. It, if I mean, it's it's you go from like he's like, ah, oh, let's use a bomb to solve this. Da, 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 da. My daughter needs help with the trigonometry homework. Let me go explain this to her. And you're like, wait a second. Are you a dumb guy? Or are you a smart guy? Right. And then it was it was yeah. the same problem as season one of Parks and Rec, where they made her too dumb, and then they realized, no, she's not likable. We've got to bring her up. And so by season two, she was competent, and they just let's let's just amp up her enthusiasm and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's also it's a show where it's like at the beginning, they're like, Hey, the joke's like, Oh yeah, we gotta land on the moon in 2024. I roll, oh, what a dumb idea. Spoiler alert, end of the season, within the first year, they landed on the moon. Oop. So I'm like, so what are you saying that that was actually a genius idea? <laughs> and then it's like you're yeah, it, it just so it, it, it's it's bizarre. You know, like the first the first episode, the whole thing is like, uh, 
should we launch this rocket today or not? And he wants to do it because there are all these representatives from D.C. there. But the scientists are saying, no, we shouldn't do it. We should push it to tomorrow. But all the, the, all the D.C. people are going to, going to be gone. And he spends the entire day like fighting with his scientists saying, like, no, no, we can do it. Fine. We can just believe. We just, the power of belief will make us, the, make us science it better. And then when it launches, fine. Uh, then it, he's like he's sharing a whiskey with his scientist who is like, yeah, I gotta tell you, you really made the right call. No, he didn't. That's not how that <laughs> yeah, stuff and, works at all. I'm, <laughs> and I'm gonna, an aside too is that part of the premise is like it starts off where he gets assigned, he's gonna be head of space force, and his wife is played by Lisa Kudrow, and then she could see she's not happy. They fast forward a year later, she's in car, she's in federal prison. That's part of the storyline. His, his wife is in federal prison. We never know why. It's a 40 to 60 year sentence. They never tell us why. Oh, really? And, and you're like, yeah. And I'm like, in what world, unless I missed an episode, I'm like, in what world do you put the head, do you make a guy who's head of a major military branch of the military and his wife gets convicted for a felony for a life sentence in jail? And everybody's just okay with it. It's just okay. Yeah. And it's just sort of a little minor thing. I'm like, and that's my my problem is like you can have a world that's crazy like if you know Pick you can one. do a crazy story. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like like upload works wonderfully well because the world is crazy, but the people are sane. The people in upload are sane, and they're trying to navigate a crazy world. And when you have comedy, where all of a sudden you know the office worked because you was a normal world and you had this chaos agent Michael Scott. You know, and, and Dwight, who was a bit weird, but other than that, you had really normal people there doing normal stuff and not like, I'm going to be a wacky person and make wacky choices and stuff. So, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, no, they never they never explained why. And so you're going, like, I think that's how am I supposed to know what to care for here? Yeah, I think it's very funny to say Lisa Kudrow is a part of this cast and she's just in jail for some reason. I think that's kind of funny there. I, I think it's a funny. I, I'm only like two or three episodes in. So uh, uh, it's it's. It's funny to know that they don't touch on that. Um. <laughs> also, another thing, another thing too is it wasn't until the third, the first two episodes, we never had two characters interact other than to exchange lines of dialogue about the uh, Nair, the, you know, Michael's uh, the, uh, ch- the space, for <laughs> Steve Carell's character, yeah, right? Yeah. There was the third episode that we finally started to get other character storylines and stuff, and that was the thing. Like first, I'm watching this with my girlfriend, like this is problematic because like. They've defined his relationship to everybody else, but we don't know how this works when he's not there. And then when he's not there, the only sort of the best you sort of get is like, you know, his daughter having troubles. Like, and it's hard to like, it's hard to sort of like, like this is a show that we're supposed to cheer a father for leaving the room when we're in the middle of like an international crisis that could lead to World War III so he can go talk to his daughter about, you know, how she's having trouble adjusted. And you're like, he's horrible. Is that, this is a horrible yeah, one. A weird <laughs> one. Yeah. Yeah. John Malkovich, though, amazing. He's great. Malkovich is always amazing. He's yeah. awesome. Uh, Alrighty, well, uh, that's going to do it here for Weird Things Today. For Andrew, Brian, and Justin, I'm Bryce, and it's been weird. Hey, look at that. Uh, Brian ran out to take a, I'm assuming, important phone call. Um, mm. But, uh, but yeah, um, uh, what should we do for after things this week, everybody? Do something. Um, what's what's going on? What's popping? Yeah. So this is the uh, the reason they never revealed why she's in prison because Craig Daniels and Carell found the idea humorous. Well, hey, that's great. <laughs> yeah, I think it's kind of funny. It, it, it gives it gives her character a certain mysterious energy, said Daniels. But it, it's it's fine. But if why you is it Lisa to live a- I think it's it's especially funny for it to be, you know, such a very like noticeable character or a noticeable actress I, I i just i'm baffled because i think daniels is brilliant and like like upload i i enjoyed it upload was a role that like i liked upload better than idiocracy you know like upload was a gr- understood crazy world sane people trying to make sense of this space yeah. forces well sometimes it's a crazy world sometimes it makes sense some people are just wacky some people i'm like it's like in improv you're like like don't don't play crazy people you know, don't play a handicap, don't play children, you know, mm-hmm. because yeah. they 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 make things more complicated. Not you can play handicap, but I mean, like, don't play like a mentally handicapped person or whatever, because like, oh, I'm going to play this because it's just a cheap way to get. It doesn't work. It just you like, oh, I get why this doesn't work. Yeah. You know? It's about reality and finding the weird stuff in reality. Uh, yeah. You by don't the get way, the, uh, you know, the, yeah. 
Uh, apparently, this was not a popular idea in the writer's room. Daniels told Thrillist, it bothers the uh, S word out of so many people, including the writing staff. They thought it was random and weird. And the more I had to defend it, some of the writers liked it more, which is maybe perverse, which kind of sounds like yeah, the legendary showrunner just said, no, we're not explaining it. <laughs> That's That was yeah, it. Yeah, the more I explained it, the more they liked it, the more they wanted their job. Yeah, mm. right. <laughs> I I still th- I I still think it's a very funny idea. I think it's great. I cuz I I, I, I think I, I there, oh, no god. I I no I think there are funny ideas by themselves, but when you're doing a comedy that tries to go, no this is real, it's just a serial world, we're going to do these real issues. Oh, and here's a wacky character and a wacky character and, these, and nothing matters. Mm-hmm. You don't know when it matters and when it doesn't. And so to me the joke is sort of lost. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, so, I'll uh, I'll have I guess I'll have more thoughts when I watch more of uh, Space Force. Yeah. I'm uh I'm going back through kind of, I'm going back through Secession again. Yeah. Secession's good. Secession. Um, Four on the floor. Um, um, yeah. What, what, what should we do for after talk? What's going on? such a weird spot right now i know that like we're busy working with all these shoots so i have like i i didn't even put out an email this week oh oh no uh by the way uh yeah i guess we can talk about that we can talk about you guys uh uh, being in like a crazy run and gun mode and some of the reasoning behind behind that yeah we can do that we'll see if we'll we'll see if brian comes back yeah let me um you guys hold down the floor i'll probably have to bail out because i do i gotta go to the dentist in about 15 Okay, then, yeah, if you could just hang out and talk with Justin for a minute while I talk with where Brian is. Okay. Cool. Cool. Hello, sir. Oh, hi, friend. How are you? Good. I'm beginning to appreciate, and I guess I wish I said this more on the show, is that, like, when these things are made, like, you don't know between the creator, the network, and your star. Yeah. You know, why certain decisions happen the way they do, and it's hard to sort of go, why did this... For me, at least, why wasn't this as happy as it could have been, you know? Yeah, uh, you know, I also wonder, you know, all, especially now, we're kind of redefining what the relationship is between, you know, streaming platform versus network versus production company, like, uh, on uh, clarity and notes and stuff like that, where, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, Netflix seems to be a place where, you know, if they're getting a name talent, they want, or streaming platforms in general, want to put out what the what the talent wants to put out because it is the worth of of their name that they want to bring to the platform um but i uh you know i think with with a cast like that a project like that with a a premise that is very much of the moment i i do wonder how much of a hey can we get an explanation on the wife like note you get from well from it's Netflix. not about an explanation explanation of the wife it, to me and it, it's it, to me it's more the idea that you're telling me that this isn't in this world this is normal or this is okay and nobody's bothered by this and everybody yeah. acts weird and it's like okay it's you keep they keep sort of thinking it but people 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 are acting weird around this thing but now we're going to have this other thing which would be an important issue with gravitas it's like I can't. Nobody takes anything seriously in this world. Nothing. There is no, yeah. you know, it, it's like magic without rules. It's like, yeah, we, we'll go this place for a joke. Like, OK, well, if you go there for it, if, if it starts off, oh, it's a stupid idea that we'll be on the moon in four years. End of it, like a year later, less of a year later. Oh, we're on the moon. It's like. It's like, so wait, where uh, where is the gravity versus the achievement? Like how impressed, like is this the most impressive thing that's ever happened on the planet? Was it a great idea to do it immediately? Like were people lazy? Like what, what is the, what is the lesson by the end? Yeah. There is an episode where somebody comes up like they, like they have this, this, this woman inventor has the special fuel they're supposed to use. Cause like the president wants them to use her fuel and they decide not to use the fuel. Cause they don't think it works in the rocket and they secretly don't use it. But she, they tell her like, we'll tell people you used it. I'm like, okay, so you're basically helping defraud investors of billions of dollars because yeah, you're right. afraid to stand up. You're like, you're like, what the f? Like, I don't get, I don't get the rationale here. Like, I, it feels like perhaps somebody who's not an experienced writer but has a tremendous amount of clout with networks and studios and stuff as an entertainment person 
is having a lot of say on this show without having to think through these things. And yeah, people are afraid to question him because this person's name means a lot. Yeah. You know, it's uh, like, corral it's funny to thinking this thing. Like, like that, uh, yeah. it's like that, um, that situation, like, or that plot sounds like a veep plot. It sounds like a very funny veep plot, but like in that show, the joke would be there. They are, they are cowards and they are, they are making a craven decision. Oh, yeah. Veep know. is a great example of veep's a world that we understand. You, you can look at veep and you understand the worlds of the world of that world, the world outside there's sort of real that you see how these horrible people act within that world. And that's what makes veep yeah. great. This, and in this, you know, we're going to, we're going to manufacture an agency. We're going to create these artificial rules for how it works. It's fine. But then it's like, when you're, when you're saying that part of the thing is the head of the agency gets to decide if we go to war with China or not, Mm. yeah um, uh all right well on. here let, let's get uh let's get whatever we can in on uh yeah on uh on on after things when andrew gets back yeah i uh no sign back from brian but we can i can talk about it well we'll figure it out we can just do a shorty if need be i'll short it up um shorten it down yeah we'll do short it down <laughs> Uh, so yeah, maybe we'll just uh, go with. Uh, 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 so Andrew, you only have what, five, five or ten minutes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, maybe we just get started with you very briefly, and then you duck out when you cool. when you yeah. gotta go. All right. Yeah. Uh, do you want to bring us in? I'll let you do that. My mouth hurts. Okay. Well, then I will start in Sorry. three, two. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the After Things podcast. I'm Bryce Castillo, joined with Andrew Main. Yay! And Justin Robert Young. Hello! Now we may have a Brian Brushwood join in uh, at some point, but this is the uh, this is the weekly Creative Professionals show uh, here where we talk about all the good things that are going on with us. Uh, gentlemen, it's it's busy over here. It's busy here at the at the Schwood. Yeah, so I, I wanted to, to, to talk about this because you guys are in a very interesting situation, obviously with the Modern Rogue YouTube channel. You have a local staff that is putting everything together and editing mm -hmm. uh, uh but with coronavirus even a local tight-knit staff is is going to have some problems so uh just lay it out for everybody uh where were you guys before coronavirus hit uh and then how did you deal with it up till now and then lay out what you're doing over the next few weeks sure so before coronavirus hit we were we were hitting the ground running i know at the, at the beginning of the year we had a very crazy december november of of 2019 with a lot of ads which mean a lot of videos and so we were burning through a lot of uh a lot of the videos that we already recorded so we kind of kind of relaxed things a bit at the beginning of the year and uh, and and we were starting to pick things up, right? Uh, we had kind of hit this pace of doing about two videos a week, which is a lot for uh, especially these long 10 to 30 or 40 minute videos that we do for the Modern Rogue. So um, we were we were kind of hoping to pace ourselves back up and get back to shooting, you know, twice twice a week tw or twice a month um, or so. And with uh, coronavirus, with a lot of the um, the shelter in place or, you know, stay home, work home, whatever. Um, you know, uh, we, we, that, that ended up affecting our ability to shoot stuff. Um, without going too much into it, Jason was not, is, became unable to visit us here at the physical studio. And because of that, it meant we had to come up with ways to, film episodes where the guys are virtual film episodes without jason film episodes where jason does a half and then we do a half and then they get on skype and talk stuff out and the logistics of that are very difficult and 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 that that, that made it tough to um both conceptualize ideas and really put it into practice and feel like we were doing great you know one of the strong points that we try to really nail in is is that we have this this high sort of production value look and when we're doing stuff via skype when we're doing stuff via phones uh that that just makes us feel a little a little flat-footed and even though some of the videos where we've done those have been okay so um so up till up to you know two weeks ago we were 
trying to we were finding this mushy metal and then as uh time has gone by um uh jason said well uh the, I, I i i don't know that's jason's idea but jason felt comfortable with the idea of okay well why don't i stay at the studio because we have these three guest rooms why don't i stay at the studio for two weeks and we will come up we've got 30 ideas for videos, 30 some ideas for videos. And we will just try to hammer every day that is open uh, with filming. Yeah. Um, so, so the idea, the idea being that uh, uh, the remote stuff was uh, going to be a uh, problem like, and, and was consistently not exactly what you wanted. And my, from my perspective as somebody who's been a guest on the show mm -hmm. and has seen how you guys work, a lot of the the magic, if not structure for the episode itself, is done on the fly. Yes. Like there's a lot of like put the science experiment out in front of the boys and then let them play. Even as they are doing a thing, there will be like, all right, stop. Let's actually go two steps back so we can actually make the arc of this episode. Mm -hmm. This other thing that we are just now finding is interesting. That yeah. doesn't happen on on skype in the same kind of way so now jason has decamped into the studio but that means now time is money on shooting as much as you possibly can which is its own challenge from a writing and production perspective exactly and um so so he's he's here and and yeah now we're trying to stuff we we started doing this last wednesday so about five days ago or so and i i man i wish i i had access i don't i don't i'm not in all of the modern rogue docs so i don't know how many how many exactly we've shot but in the 10 to 15 episode range which is which is a lot you know um, yeah uh we've kind of have this pace of doing two to three episodes a day but it it is it is a lot and it's very i think one of the toughest things about it is you might think of the you might think of what that looks like when you say okay we are setting aside two weeks and we're setting aside these days to do these episodes and you might think that that is more structured than we are doing <laughs> right i mean there's the, i know that there is exists there some, exists. some people yeah people who have not been around the operation might think that this is something that is a lot more uh of, of abc than it is because there's definitely mm -hmm. a lot of like i mean my understanding it's a lot of playing is, it by ear there's felix has a bag of tricks at, or you know jason has a bag of scripts i guess would be the better way to put it <laughs> and the the script comes out and either you shoot that script or you find out whether or not that script is okay or it's just like no let's do the other script and mm -hmm. so he reaches back in pulls another script and then and then goes but again this is the like the live wire of the show it, it, it's what makes the lived in excitement you know of of the show feel what it is but at the same time man i can only imagine like that is a different experience when you do that twice mm -hmm. a month to every day for two weeks two weeks right and uh and and to, to to everyone's credit right like you don't come up with, like there is a doc out there that has the has the ideas and has dates on them and is there's a lot of prep going into this because every episode takes a certain amount of prep in terms of sourcing material sourcing information yeah. you know kind of figuring out how we tell the story um so this is not to say that there's none of that but there's there's also not a call sheet every day right yeah. a lot of it yeah. is like let's just go like a lot of it is just let's just go we know that uh we have a certain amount of staff who can work different production things um between myself uh brant and john our other shooter producer um you know we we have an ability to to lead and supervise shoots as much as we can Corey and annalisa who are are, are newer can also fill in for certain roles um, and they have a, a, a slightly wider amount of availability. So it's becoming this r interesting um, liquid situation or I get a fluid situation of, all right, tomorrow we should start at four. Who's gonna, who can, who can arrive? Who's here? Who's here? Yeah. Um, and, and everyone is trying, you know, every, like everyone is trying to, to do their best to make, you know, like we did a shoot yesterday and, 
I had to tell them like, well, I have, I, I need to make a rough cut of this thing to send to a sponsor because the sponsor needs three days to look at it. And yeah. normally I wouldn't work on this until Wednesday, which is the day before it's due. So I will, I will work on that. And then I will show up to the shoot whenever. And then I will relieve John. Uh, and, yeah. and it ended up, it ended up working out great. I was there for the things they had already set up and then John gets to go leave and he can do his thing. So I think, uh, having this week down um, is a good sign that we are beyond the capacity to handle this, to handle yeah whatever needs to be handled. Um, but it is tough, you know. Brian, uh, if, if Brian were here, he he would share uh, the anecdote that he shared earlier on the stream, which is that like we have kind of scheduled things out to a five day to five out of the seven days of the week from Wednesday through Sunday, which for yeah. most people gives them Monday and Tuesday off, uh, for Brian and my, and myself Monday, which is the day that we record all these podcasts, it's literally a big streaming production day. It's, and then Tuesday is a big night attack day, is night night attack attack at day night. and night. Yeah. Right. You know, uh, Brian is here podcasting for eight hours. I then go home and spend another four or five hours publishing and posting these episodes the same night. Night Attack is late in the evening. Here it's eight o'clock to usually midnight here, plus any amount of time I need to write or edit the game, if I need to make graphics, if I got to get stuff in order. Um, and then not so much, it's just like Night Attack has its own energy, and it, there's certainly nothing yeah. that I want to do afterwards. And there's, I n need to have some of that that time beforehand so um they are low they're 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 not high pressure the way that a shoot may be or they're not as grueling as an outdoor shoot might be for four hours but they're their own thing so um where where i uh, i and, and brian doesn't doesn't have a, as much of this out but you know if i need to go work on something i can say hey i won't be here for this day but brian really can't yeah, I can't and so there's I, no there's no modern rogue stuff that is not Brian needs to be there and right. Brian needs to be in a good mood and Brian needs to uh, be able to put it together which is its own like that that's that's its own pressure that's its mm -hmm. own ego depletion I mean it, it's part of the thing that I realized you know even just doing those VR shoots with Brian that he had a lot more experience with was that like you know, when you're like talent, quote unquote, right. Mm -hmm. And like, I'd been on sets and stuff before and I'd been far more in the like PA level. I was always like, like, Oh fuck. Like I, I'd always want to like go and help out. If I were the one on in front of the camera, this is like what I do. And then you realize at a certain point that it's like, well, there is a value to energy, of mm -hmm. uh, energy conservation. Like you do need to be aware of that because uh, if you're overextending yourself before you go in front of the camera, all the hard work that everybody's putting in to make everything good, like you're, sh you're, you're, you're taking a, a poop on them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like uh, uh, by not being the person that you were, that you need to be to get that good product. Your thing is to and, be here and to do your thing. And you need to be able to nail it, you know, just it's like, yes. like, f on, like on the production side, when we have technical issues, like I take it on myself. If there's a screw up, we had a screw up, a screw up on Saturday that was on me and I, yeah. and I felt, I felt really bad about it. If, and I'm sure it's a very similar thing of if you can't get the lines out, right. If you can't figure out, you know, cause they, like we mentioned, like they come up with so much of the story and stuff on the fly. Um, it's, if you can't figure that out, then, then I'm sure that's, what's yeah, if, if you can't get in the right headspace and, and that's the thing is that like in this situation, everybody is forming a human pyramid. So you're at the top, mm -hmm. right? So you better, when you're at the top, you better make it worth it. <laughs> you yeah. better make it, you better show everybody why you're the person at the top of the pyramid. Uh, uh, and you know, for, for you guys and, and for Brian now, like, I mean, I would say you two are probably the, on, you know, the, the people that are being stretched the most and, and Jason in another way, because he has to uproot his life to mm -hmm. be there. But like, it's a full-time job to run this streaming studio, right? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, uh, then turn into cameraman producer, 
editor, like that's a whole other thing. And by the way, these are not the only irons you have in the fire. Like you, right. you also have the TikToks. You also have you saw uh, Scamation um, and the store Scamation. stuff, everything. And and then on top of that, you're doing stuff that is you know outside of that purview between the email list and Friday Night Bryce and and all the other like streams and stuff where you right. are where you're the guy at the top of the pyramid, right? <laughs> like, um, um, and granted right now you're the entire pyramid, but also, I mean, this is how these projects begin and, and become right. supported. And so, Oh, it looks like we got Brian back here. Um, and, and so, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. And, and so we're, we're all trying to, um, uh, to make, um, make space and, 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 uh, uh, you know, we are kind of constantly telling everybody like, Hey, make sure you m make sure you aren't burning yourself out over this, especially when you have other responsibilities and because it's, and that's, it's, oh, that's hard. That, right. that, that's a hard lesson to get through because it's like, don't burn yourself out. Also, we're going to uh, uh, quintuple our work output in this like period. Like yeah. we're, we're going to do six months out. worth of shoots in two yeah. weeks. We are going to burn you out, but please don't get burnt out okay. is a very it's 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 a hard lesson. And maybe part of that is for you guys. It's 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 more on the level of like. Let's all be honest and communicate mm -hmm. on where we are, because if like. Spoiler alert, by the end of this, there will be frays. <laughs> there will be people that are fucking annoyed. There will be toes stepped on. There will be and re stepped on mm -hmm. like. This is going to be something where patience will be a virtue, but it it has to be managed. It's not to be avoided. It has to be managed right. by way of communication. Yeah. Um, so I, I and I think we have enough. Thankfully, like because for so long, it's been me and Brant or maybe John Tilton or, or Zach Calder or whoever. Um, and so I think we have this tendency to you know to need to be there all the time and support everything as much as we can um, yeah because there's there's only so much um there, there are only so many you know people who can who can fit fill those those roles and so um i think uh i, I think what we are finding out in real time is that uh we have enough capacity to make it work whatever it needs to be um uh we got we got brian here if you want to give a give us so we we just spent the, the after things talking about the the two-week shooting intensive that we're in the middle of and um uh you know uh kind of kind of getting thoughts and and just talking it out yeah it's um uh, and how are it, you feeling with in terms of because i think i think we've hit a lot of the overview how are you feeling in one week into this now much better now and yeah. i know i know that you and i smilingly joke about how of everybody on the team you and i have no days off for three we weeks just, straight yeah right um but i think secretly uh um I, I i think that there was a brief moment that we were both afraid that we had bitten off too much um and and i think we had a recalibration because, uh, you know, Jason, you know, if you're going to do something as extreme as move to another place <laughs> away yeah. from your wife, yeah. then then you're probably uh, the last thing you want is to be accused of showing up under uh, 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 under, under armed. Right. Yeah. So um, uh, uh, it took a few days for us to realize, like, oh, oh, you're prepared for three a day nobody's told you that we don't all necessarily want to do three a day mm. on top of our regular full-time day do jobs and all that stuff and and so once we once we settled on that um i don't know yesterday felt great and the last couple of days have felt great um yeah uh not not that i would love for it to be this way forever um but i'm pleased because when you're creating art, uh, however you define art, um, it, it matters how you feel while it's happening. 
And I think we're closer to a very sustainable balance of ways that all of us can feel good and, and keep on going. Again, not indefinitely, but for sure. certainly for uh, us to get back caught up to on schedule and possibly ahead of. Yeah. Um, I, I, and, is, is, is that where you're at? Or? No, yeah. I, I think, I, 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 like I mentioned earlier, it's a big, it's a, it's a big ask, and it's a, and it's and it's a big ask, and and I think there's also like a slightly unspoken element to it of like, okay, everyone has, you know, we're we're trying to keep safety as much as we can. So, uh, I mean, what what I, other ways yeah, can it, we make sure that we're safe? outside of of the job space and so i think that is that's an that's another interesting point but but having done these past you know we're, week yeah, we're not even just talking about like you know the covid exposure stuff and the fact that we had to write a 10 commandments of thou shalt so that all of us can feel safe working here uh on top of that we have the nature of safety where shooting 12 gauge shotguns just on the property yesterday uh making a call to the vfw next door saying like hey we're shooting guns over here, just FYI, LOL. You know, I mean, it's like, yeah. mm -hmm. it's a lot. It's a lot to juggle. Um, but um, uh, but I think this past week has bore out that we have, we we finally ha are in a place where, because I, I think um, anytime we've grown in capacity, we have filled that capacity. Yeah. Um, almost immediately. Right, uh, you know, uh, uh we got a new person. Great. Now we're doing more every week, right? Um, and I think with with especially Corey and Annalisa's ability to to plug into other other uh, parts of the actual production side, um, I think we've got enough fluid uh, capacity to handle whatever anybody needs to do to make sure everything runs for these two weeks instead of just this or uh, you know, letting something go off a week. Yeah. And I think the, um, I think the big, uh, the big, uh, uh what, uh, uh, motivating factor, the target, uh, the goal is I think we all want to be in a place where we're all in alignment with what we're up to, but we all know that any one of us can take a moment and things will be okay. And, uh, and, and I'm feeling that more, uh, I'm feeling that more five days into the monorug push than I was beforehand. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Uh, because that was more of a question mark, like, oh my God, I guess, yeah, yeah, yeah we got to work really hard and overdo the thing or whatever. But it's like now, like, for example, we have an episode where creatively we figured out that oh wait we can tell this story and the story might even be better if nobody's around and it's only jason and brian running around with cell phone cameras and fluorescent lights in the bug covered back five acres uh and yes we'll have to do our wrapper before and after or whatever but just realizing that we have that flexibility uh, has uh, I don't I don't know been very empowering if if that if that I, I don't know how much that well ties and that's in and that's stuff. and that's a that's a that's a necessity as a mother of invention thing and and it's also uh, where you guys figure out like okay this isn't just about a playbook that we have uh, how would we evolve it why are we doing it and uh, uh, if that means it's happening because uh, you are on a a big crunch then you're going to see how it plays out, but it, it feels good in the moment. And if it feels good in the moment for you guys, then usually that's a good sign that it's going to feel good in the edit. Yeah. And well, and, and I, I, I think a bit about, uh, uh, as a long time fan of radio lab, um, radio lab at one point meant Jad and Robert, and that's what radio lab was. Um, then there were some Robert episodes and then there were some Jad episodes. And now we're in a phase where there's episodes with neither Robert nor Jad. Uh, still love the show. It's still great. Still love everything about it. And and I think that 
uh, we, we've talked about how many, many ways we respect everything Leo Laporte has done over at Twit, but we've also talked about how he uh, seems to have trapped himself as being important to everything, and none of us want that. And we we want to be more Radio Lab than Twit, right? And so, yeah. Uh, in that regard, uh, I'm really really proud to see us uh, number one shooting like a TV show would, um, and giving flexibility to the types of stories that we want to tell, and uh, hopefully the dividends that will give us is let's say crazy idea. Let's say Carnegie Hall wants to book Night Attack for seven weeks straight like i feel like monorogue and cord killers and weird things and like 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 we're closer than we've ever been to uh not having any one person being pivotal uh than ever before and that makes me proud yeah oh too i mean that, that's that's the key to an everlasting brand right that's the key to uh uh you know you got to build up those lieutenants and and you know, make the audience feel like, hey, every once in a while, this is a, you know, this is this is a a a, a more side character episode, but you're excited for it, and it's not like something's being taken away from you. Yeah, awesome. Uh, any any last thoughts on this? I think this was a good uh, uh, a good a good talk about it. Yeah, I uh, 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 sorry that I was gone for most of it. Um, uh, uh, if it helps, uh, that was our friends over at Doghouse Systems, the folks who ah. provided the hardware that runs everything. And it was a, um, it was one of those conversations where I, I probably could have ducked out immediately, but they just kept wanting to tell me good news <laughs> yeah. and how happy they were to work with us. And, oh, awesome. uh, and, 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 and before you know it, you know, we're thinking up future ideas and so on. So I, uh, uh, thank you to everybody who, uh, look, we know that buying a big PC is not an every year thing. You know, every few years you're going to need to do it. We just hope that you make sure to go to doghouse systems.com slash V slash rogue, use promo code rogue at checkout, get a free SSD and, uh, hopefully maybe something even more interesting. We'll, we'll see in the future. Awesome. Okay. Absolutely. Well uh, for Brian and Justin and Andrew who had to duck out, uh, very briefly, uh, uh, into the show. Uh, it's been after. All righty. Hey, everybody. Good work today. Thank you so much for covering for me. I, I, I wish uh, no problem. I, I, uh, I, I don't like making a habit of literally walking out in the middle of a show, <laughs> but, uh, but, but that was a conversation that we hadn't had in a while. So I want to do mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, all right, everybody, we're going to shut this down so that the guys can go take a short break before happy hour in 30 minutes. So uh, thank you, everybody who is watching. And we will be back in 30 minutes for that. And then Cord Killers in about two and a half hours. We got Lamar Wilson on. Woo! Lamar Wilson. He's good. Uh, we're going to have him on Cord Killers. So stay tuned for that. Also, have a good rest of your Monday. Peace. Peace.